Hello, this is Melissa, your entrance exam queen, and we are here on this channel to help you pass your exam with ease and confidence. We're going to talk about flood insurance and what you want to pay attention to and be aware of taking your property and casualty or personal lines exam in terms of the flood. Um, and it's not a lot of information that you actually need to know. Please make sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video. You can also drop a comment below about what state you're in and what test you are taking. And we will tell you what's, an, what's important. And also check out my all of my resources available on insuranceexamqueen.com. We not only have free resources, notes that you can use, games that you can play. We also have class series, which are longer, more in-depth videos from the YouTube channel that will help you understand and be able to get you that pass. All right, so let's jump into flood insurance. So I'm gonna keep this video close to the things you need to remember. It's not all encompassing about flood and every possible thing about flood. I'm gonna focus on the things that you really wanna solidify and remember in your mind. The first thing is actually something I made up, which is the two, two, two rule. And this is to help you with your memorization of the things you need to remember. The first thing, uh, the first two is that any structure that is, if you want to buy flood insurance on a structure, there's rules about the structure. And one of the first rules is that it has to have at least two walls and a roof and not entirely over water. So flood insurance has, if you're going to cover a building for flood insurance, it has to have at least two walls, a roof, and not be entirely over water. The next two are kind of different. It's one or the other. And this is the rules for responding to a flood claim. And by the way, I didn't emphasize this. Flood is excluded on homeowners. Your homeowners, your dwelling will not cover flood. The only way to get flood is through the government's flood insurance. So you have to buy flood insurance separately all by itself. And it comes through the government. You, you're, you're, it doesn't, you may get it from all state or state farm, but they're not the ones actually providing the money towards it. It's actually the government. Okay. So flood insurance is a government run program. And, um, they they have rules about when they will respond to a flood claim or when they won't. And that's what the next two are. The next two are the property either needs to be two or more acres, two or more acres of normally dry land. So what they're saying is if you have a house on one acre, and only that one acre floods, your flood insurance will actually not respond to the claim because two or more acres needs to flood. And then they will respond to the claim. The next one is or, 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 so it's either two or more acres of normally dry land or one or the other, as long as one or the other kicks in, two or more properties two or more properties and one of them is yours. So what they're saying here is what if you and your neighbor together were on one acre of land and that one acre of land flooded, then they would respond to that claim because it impacted two or more properties. So they're only going to respond to a flood if it's two or more acres of normally dry land or two or more properties and one of them is yours. This is, um, I made, the, again, I made this up, the two to two rule. You won't see it talked about anywhere else. Usually these concepts are kind of talked separately from each other, but I grouped them all together to help you with memorization. So the two to two rule with flood. The next thing you wanna remember with flood is there is a 30 day waiting period, 30 day waiting period, okay? They don't want you to buy flood only when you need it. They want you to buy flood all the time because insurance, flood insurance, again, is a government run program 
they have to use tax money if they don't have enough premium money, okay? So when they are you know, paying out these claims, they wanna be collecting premium all the time. They don't wanna collect premium just when a flood is about to come. So they put in a 30 day waiting period to prevent people from <clears throat> only calling in right when there's a flood or oh, a hurricane is coming, I better add flood insurance to my, my insurance portfolio. <laughs> You're supposed to have it all the time. So when you, if you call in today to get flood, it won't start until 30 days from now. So there's a 30 day waiting period on flood. There are a few exceptions to that. Um, if you have a government backed loan, they will let you buy flood at any time active right away. The reason for that is because if the house does flood and you have no insurance, you're likely to abandon it and abandon that government backed loan. <laughs> so they allow you to get flood insurance on it at any point so that they're not left with a house that has been flooded and that you're more likely to stay in the home if you have flood insurance on it. The 30 day waiting period can also be waived if you're brand new to, if, if you're um, uh, refinancing the loan and the new mortgage requires that you have it in order to get the mortgage. So they will allow you to immediately have it. Um, and if the policy is being transferred from one to another. So like flood insurance actually follows the house, not the person. So flood insurance follows the house, not the person. So if I'm gonna buy your house, you can just transfer your flood insurance to me and it would immediately kick in. I wouldn't need to wait 30 days, okay? Um, another thing about flood is, um, and I don't even have the exact fully definitions memorized, but there's, they're either going to ask you a question about what, what is a flood and what is not a flood. And two of the most common answers is a mudslide is a flood, but a landslide is not. Technically, both of them do include water, but a landslide doesn't include nearly as much water. So if you were to have a landslide and you filed a flood claim, it wouldn't work. But if you have a mudslide and you filed a flood claim, it would work. Um, you you want to read, um, there's also like, not a flood would be sewer backup. So the sewer system backing up into your home because the pipes got really dirty or the sewer system in town got all plugged up. That's not, and it backs up into your house. They don't see that as a flood. So sewer backup is not a flood. They're not gonna respond to that. Um, uh, what is a flood is like accumulation of water um, on, uh, I, don't, I don't know how exactly they say it, but read your state approved course. <laughs> so whatever course you have, um, pick one or the other, either memorize what is a flood or memorize what is not a flood, and you should be able to answer any questions that they have. Um, but again, mudslide and landslide are probably the most common examples, which is why that's the one I have memorized. Um, but if you read that list just a few times, what is a flood or what is not a flood, you should be able to lock in the knowledge you need to, to answer any of those questions. In terms of the things, oh, and one more thing is the max coverage. The max coverage that you can have, so coverage A on a homeowner's is the walls and the roof. And on a flood insurance policy, the max that you can get for coverage A is 250,000. So even if you have a million dollar home, you cannot buy flood insurance for a million dollars. You can only buy flood insurance for 250,000. That is the max available for a flood insurance policy. And that is for coverage A. Um, the other thing is that coverage C, which is known as contents, A and C have their own deductibles. So normally on a homeowner's claim, like if my house burns down, I have to rebuild the walls and the roof and I have to replace all the stuff inside, I would pay one deductible. On flood insurance, I would have to pay one deductible for the walls and the roof and a whole other deductible for all the stuff inside. So flood insurance requires two deductibles, one for A, one for C, and that's just the way it is. Now there is more to know about flood, but it is not a huge topic. 
you definitely will have a like, you know, three, two, two to five questions on flood. It's usually tied into another chapter. Um, so it's, it's, it's not its own topic all by itself that has a ton of questions. But by memorizing these few things, you should be able to answer a good amount of the flood questions you get correctly to be able to secure your own points, okay? So that's what I wanted to share with you for flood. This is your insurance exam queen sending you all the loves, all the vibes to pass your exam. Have an amazing day.